All right. Um, I'm Aaron from Morgan Stanley, and I'm going to be talking about parsing binary files in Q. Um, so, uh, everybody's got one of these, cell phone, and for most of us, it's our main camera these days. Um, and they embed all sorts of things in those photos when you take them. GPS data, uh, plus all sorts of other things. Who knows what's in there that could be tracked back to you. And so there I was a few years ago wanting to find out exactly what was in some of my photos. And I tried opening them up in an image editor and looking at its metadata viewer. And it was confusing. And I didn't really believe what it was telling me. So I thought I'd have a look inside the file itself. And I decided to try it in Q. So uh, the basic approach to parsing a binary file in Q is read it as a byte vector. Let's read one, then break it up. Um, most binary files these days are structured as records which contain fields. And then in order to understand it, you need to format the field into something you can read. So I'm going to be working through an example of a PNG image file um, for uh, Concreteness, I'm going to be working with this particular image, which I've blown up for visibility, a two by two pixel ping of red, green, blue, and black. So uh, you start with read one on that file, and you get this byte vector. Then you go to Wikipedia, and you look up how pings work. And what you find out is they start with an eight byte file signature, which is these bytes, followed by chunks. Chunk is the format that, uh, or the design structure that most modern binary formats use which is essentially, they give you the length of this particular section of the data. They give you some kind of type indicator of what that section is. They give you the data itself, and then they give you a checksum. Um, this is useful uh, most fundamentally because it makes the parsing much easier. You simply have to parse uh, the first couple of fields in a chunk, and then you know if you care about that one and if you understand how to read it. And if you don't, you can skip it and go on to the next one. So in order to parse this, we drop off the file signature. Then we take the next four bytes, which are the length, and convert that to an int. So here's the code for that. It tells us that this first chunk is of length 13. So the total chunk size, because that length doesn't include the metadata, is going to be the length plus the type plus those 13 bytes of data plus the checksum, which is 25 bytes. So we take the 25 bytes after the signature, and we cut it up according to those lengths, 44134, and we get this. So that's the fields of the chunk. Then the type is a character string, so we cast that to character, and we find out that that is uh, type IHDR, the header type. And the dots tell us that that breaks up like this. So here's a little dictionary construction to apply names to that. Um, so this is width, height, uh, color bit depth, color type, some other stuff. And then you could continue on from here with applying formatting as appropriate, converting these to integers, um, and dereferencing these against enum lists you can find in the documentation. Um, then after that, to get the next chunk, you remove that chunk and repeat the whole process. So you drop off those 25 bytes, take the length, convert to an int, you find out that that int is 1. So the next block has only one byte of data. So that's 13, counting the metadata. Cut that up, and you get this. Convert the type to a character string, and you get sRGB. So that's a flag. Um, the following chunks are gamma, phys, idat, and i end. idat is the actual image data. So that is this vector here. This is compressed with zlib. So um, I decompressed that using a program called zpipe, which is linked here. You can get the code for that from the developers of Ping. Um, and it decompresses into this. These are uh, filter indicators, which is a compression thing specific to Ping. But this is the actual pixel data. So these are RGB triples. So there you can see red, green, blue, black, exactly as the image showed. Um, on the to-do list, implement zlib in Q. <laughs> or uh, ideally, get KX to make QGZ work with zlib streams as well as gzip ones. Um, so to generalize this approach, what I've just outlined, drop the file sig, and then in a loop, get the length of the next chunk, read that length plus the metadata from the stream, parse that data, drop that chunk from the stream, and repeat. So implemented. 
that looks like this. Uh, and you can see it producing a dictionary output with each of the chunk types uh, and the data of them. Or more readably, it looks like this. So you can see um, this is a common pattern in parsing and a lot of other things that use uh, over to do progressive uh, processing. Um, you pass in some sort of input structure uh, which contains um, the input data, an empty output data field, and then inside the function you break, you break that into input and output, you remove some input, you append some output, and return that, and then you call that with over, until it which will run it until it consumes all input. So in this case, I take off the signature, pass in the rest of it, pass in an em a list initialized with colon, colon, and then I break that up, and then if there is any remaining data, I run that parse, append the uh, parse data to the output, return that. Call it with over, and then the output will be uh, the result. And here it is called again. Um, and then after that, you can proceed to write parsers and formatters for all the chunks and fields that you're actually interested in. So uh, what can you do with this once you've got all of this? You can make a metadata editor, which was the original motivation for this. You can write some code that will allow you to read in a ping, identify what metadata chunks are available, add new ones, modify existing ones, delete them, and write back the, uh, the, new, the ping as modified. So you could also use this to do tagging, um, to extract camera information, and categorize your stuff by what it was shot on. You can use this for privacy, things like removing GPS info. You can also, once you know enough about the format, use this to write pings. So what you have to do there is construct a pixel array, then compress it, Again, it would be nice if this could be done natively in Q, but at the moment I'm using an uh, app called PIGS, which is parallel implementation of gzip, which can actually write raw zlib streams. Um, and then you add the metadata chunks. So I've uh, put on my, uh, the, the GitHub associated with my blog, um, a p script, png.q, that contains this code. Um, and I've added that to my Mandelbrot generator written in K, which uh, can now output Mandelbrots in ping, like this. So you can now use Q to do uh, computer-generated art in Q and put it out as pings directly. Um, so that's ping. Uh, now I'm going to go through a brief overview of a second example that's of uh, possibly some um, more immediate practical utility for business uses, uh, and that's unzip. So zip, um, zip is an old and quite complicated format. Uh, it comes from the late 80s. Um, the design constraints it was under at the time were floppies and memory footprints of less than a megabyte. So a lot of things about it are designed for that era. Um, it is documented in this file called appnote.txt, which is nearly 4,000 lines, so it's kind of a mess. Um, the motivation for doing this directly in Q is to avoid system unzip calls for several reasons. Um, one is performance. Uh, under certain circumstances, such as when there's a lot of memory in use, um, system uh, calling out with system, which involves forking, can take a decent amount of time just to actually make the system call. And then there's the disk space considerations involved in the temp files that the system uses, or any temp files that you might be using if you're doing a regular unzip rather than an unzip to standard out. There are other ways to avoid that using pipes and FIFOs and so on, but they make your code considerably more complicated. Um, and they're still not callable from Peach, which this is. So the general outline, um, one of the oddities of zip is that the index structures are at the end of the file. So you have to find those first. Um, and then you parse the index structure in order to tell you what the files are in the archive and where within the file they're located in terms of bytes. And then you can find each file or each file of interest and parse its records, finally decompressing the data. So um, some design considerations for this. Archives may be very large, 
And some of the use cases are you may only want to list the files rather than actually extract them. This is the equivalent of unzip-l. And you may only want to extract some of the files rather than all of them. This is the equivalent of a two arg unzip, unzip you know, file.zip file. Um, and an additional one, it's possible to have a zip file that's contained only in memory rather than as an actual disk file. Uh, received at, from a REST call, for instance. Um, I've seen REST interfaces that return their outputs as a zip rather than a gzip. So one solution that helps you solve all of these things is to uh, code in terms of a function that agnostically reads bytes from either a file or a byte vector. So this is that function. Um, it simply checks to see if its input is a file, and if so, it uses the three arg version of read one. If it's a byte vector, then it just uses a quick computation that extracts a range from that vector. Um, the full implementation of unzip is uh, just yesterday now merged into FinOS, a KDB project, which I'm a contributor to. So you can see it there. And here is um, uh, one final thing, which is how the decompression itself works, which is uh, to use QGZ. So, uh, ZIP um, generally uses deflate, which is a standard compression algorithm, and it is the same one that gzip uses. It's just the stream format is slightly different. So a gzip stream consists of a header, um, the data, a CRC checksum, and um, and the, the original size of the uncompressed data. So given uh, though that information, the compressed data, the CRC, and the size, you can compose a valid gzip stream, which QGZ can decompress, which is a good thing because I really didn't want to have to write inflate in Q. And the performance would probably have been awful, anyway, compared to C. Um, so. Uh, here are some examples using it with a zip file I constructed just for testing purposes. So, um, so there it is with uh, unzip.list, that's the equivalent of unzip-l. Um, you get back the file, its size, and its mod time. Here's unzip, that's the equivalent of just regular unzip with no extra options. You get back the contents of each file as a character string. Um, and here is two arg unzip, which extracts a single file or a list of files. You get back that one file as a character string. And then here is a proof that it is equivalent to unzip the file and the bytes of the file, um, showing that you can do that case where you have a zip stream in memory. Um, that's it. Any questions?